So last video, I went kind of fast because I wanted to get through the orbit Kerbin stage of the game and move on to bigger and better things for the following videos. And so uh, today we have bigger and better things, at least uh, so to speak, like relative to what we just done. We're going to the moon, which is, of course, a much bigger thing than going to orbit around Kerbin. Uh, we actually have primary objectives as well as secondary objectives. And these two things don't really go together for me today. So we're going to do them separately. But I think we're going to hit the primary one first because I have a feeling that after we do this primary one, it may open up additional secondary ones. And then we may be able to do all of the secondary ones that are there at that time all in one launch because I have a feeling that land on the moon is going to be the next task that it gives me. So what this wants us to do is it wants us to go to the moon, uh, get orbit. It doesn't require us to come back and it doesn't require us to land. So we're just going to go to orbit. We need to get an apoapsis of less than 2,400 kilometers and a periapsis greater than 60 kilometers. Unlike Kerbin, the moon does not have an atmosphere. So there is no minimum that we have to be around the moon for our periapsis in order to stay in orbit in this game. We do, however, still have to be high enough to where the mountains and the, the raises and elevation on the moon don't get us around orbit as well because we don't want to hit the ground uh, just because the ground go is, is elevated in a certain spot, right? So being above 10 kilometers or so is a pretty safe bet. And you can get some pretty cool views going uh, that low. So we're going to do that. And we're going to do this with a probe because it doesn't require us to come back. I think that's a great way to do it. Uh, we're also going to, again, try to get the going green, which is just using a uh, science junior to do an environmental survey on Kerbin. We've already done this a couple of times now. Uh, spacewalking, EVA. We've done this already, uh, but since these weren't on the list when we did them, we don't get credit for them. Very weird. I hope they change it, like I said before, but we're going to start with this one because I have a feeling this one's going to unlock additional secondaries. So the first thing I want to do is go to research and development. We have 148 science points, and I'm going to invest in research miniaturization. This is going to give us the science junior junior, which is basically the exact same environmental survey part that we've had before, except now this is a miniaturized radially mounted version. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. Next thing I want to get is long range probes. Now we don't necessarily need the antenna for this right now. Uh, in fact, this Communitron HG5 doesn't even have a difference in range. The max range is the same as the uh, other antennas that we got before at 200 meters. You can see at the probes menu here, max range 200 millimeter, millimeters. Uh, yeah, 200 million meters is what it is. Yep. Um, the transmission rate on the data transceiver though this is what changes so right here we can transmit data for our science at two and a half kilobits per second and it takes us five and a half uh, electric charge per second while we are transmitting that okay so two and a half kilobits per second for 5.5 electric charge that's the ratio you got to look at right and uh, this one here it transmits slower but it takes half the electric charge so it's like the the faster you transmit the worse your energy <laughs> ratio is for these things right so if i go over to long range probes and i see this we transmit at seven and a half kilobits per second but now it's going to cost us 25 electric charge per second that's what's really changing here and then finally we have the long antenna here now this one is seven and a half electric charge for 1.5 so it's worse uh, as far as the transmission rate goes but what you get out of this one is the ability to go very long ranges we're talking 3.6 sorry uh, 36 gigameters so we go really far away from this one what i'm interested in for this this node though are these probes right here i like the idea of being able to mount things to them for this design and we're eventually going to use them anyway and these also come with extra electric charge built in as well as a reaction wheel that is uh well that exists right it saves us apart because it comes with a built-in reaction wheel so we don't have to add a new reaction wheel later on it also has a transmission rate built into it but we're not necessarily going to use that we are however going to add that to the total transmission rate that we get when we're transmitting so in other words i'm i'm doing this for the probes that was a really really long explanation that was completely unnecessary and i apologize for that <laughs> i'm doing it for the probes all right uh finally the last thing i'm going to do is small payloads we don't have a whole lot of XS format. Uh, th these things don't really give you, I mean, okay, so 1.25 meters, right? That's what the small one normally is. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of the XS parts and uh, these probes are gonna fit that form factor when we go and use them. So uh, small payloads is gonna allow me to have a rocket that looks a little bit more realistic and, and have payloads and stuff for the future. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that. 
that is the extent of what we're going to do for our rocket for this uh, unmanned mission. Let's take a look at the vehicle assembly building and build our rocket. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the HECS guidance control unit. These are basically the same. There's only slight variations in how they are. How they are. Uh, the variation basically is how much electric charge is, is inside it, right? Uh, how much electric charge does it come with? And also how much electric charge does it require while it's operating as well as the reaction wheel strength and i'm mostly looking for just a stronger reaction wheel. this is why we're choosing the hecs so we're going to start with that now the second thing i'm going to do is i'm going to grab my new science part and that is the uh rg scm 01 science junior junior basically it's the same as this experiment we've been using before but it's a miniaturized radially mounted version of it and if i do this just right with my mouse I can get that to kind of line up right on there. I think that looks pretty good. Built in like that. I like it. Uh, next, we want transmission speeds to be improved. And uh, I don't want to have to wait forever for my, my, my science. So we're going to come over to our communications. We're going to grab the Communitron 16. Again, the same 200 million meters, but this one is 2.5 kilobits per second instead of 0.7. So we're going to be able to transmit a little bit faster. And you know what? I don't know if this thing actually works. Like, you know, if you have two of them. But I'm going to have two of them anyway, just for the design. So we're going to have two of these antennas, all right? So when they are extended, I don't know if that means we can transmit it now at five. Or if that means that we're still baked at two and a half. I have no idea. But, like, do they add together? I don't know. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, maybe we'll find out while we're doing this. I don't know. Uh, we're going to go with uh, this one being moon sat. Uh, you know, it's more, more like moon flyby. But I might just put a... Uh, uh, I don't really want to call it moon sat because I like to have the sat name for things that are permanently in orbit for communications, but this one could actually serve that purpose later. So yeah, why don't we put this as moon sat one dash one is fine. Uh, so moon sat dash one will be the name of this vehicle. So the next thing I want to do is I need to bake this thing. Uh, I, I need to make it to where it's uh, able to transmit. And that means I need electric generation as well as electronic, uh, electric storage. So I need some rechargeable batteries. So we're going to have 400 units of electric charge on this vehicle. Going to look about like that. And then I'm going to use these small solar panels and line them up with the flat edges of this hexagon here. As you know, it is the bestagon. So right about here, we're going to line these up with the bestagon like that. Okay, cool. So now we have solar panels all the way around it and we have 400 units of charge baked in. It's actually 430 because of the built in in here. So 430 units of charge. Okay. So the next thing here is to uh, get ourselves the ability to propel this thing, right? We don't have a whole lot, like I said, of the XS parts. They're just not available right now. I have to research more for that. Uh, so what I'm going to use instead is the, in the payloads category, I'm going to use the cockle shell. Now, this is bigger. I could use the little neck, which gives us that smaller form factor, but it looks weird and it's not quite right. Uh, the purpose of this is to create a fairing. And so we want a base that is wider than what we need. And then what we're going to do is configure that to come up over top of our payload. And I'm actually going to bring this in just a little bit. That should be fine. Yeah. So we'll bring this in just a little bit. And then, uh, oh, it didn't uh, didn't save my changes here. Bring it in. Yep, like this. Uh, wow, you are something else, video game. So their fairing tools still don't work well, huh? Yeah, apparently that's still a thing. <laughs> they still don't work well. God damn it. It's such a simple thing, you think. You think it is, and then you realize that, you know, I'm not a developer, so I have no idea how difficult it really is to do these things, but... Oh, I don't want it to stand that tall. I wanted this to be shaped differently, but it doesn't look like it's going to let me have a... Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to let me do that. All right, one more try on this. Um, we're going to come up to about this far. And I want you to go in here, like that. Can you stay here and make a new section? Okay, you, you went in again, which is like not quite what I asked for. So you're not shaping the way I want you to. Okay and done yeah fairings 
are still stupid <laughs> in Kerbal Space Program 2. I'm just going to say, they're still really dumb. But we got a fairing that's not what I wanted, but it, at least it, you know, completes. So we'll take it. All right. So this is going to basically give us that nice nose cone shape here for uh, aerodynamics. Although, again, I wish, it was, I wish it was a different shape, but it is what it is. All right. So on the bottom of this, we're going to go with fuel tanks. I want to have one of these uh, T200s about here should be good uh and then we're gonna pop a terrier right on the tip of that now that's gonna give us 2300 meters per second 2300 plus meters per second of delta v more than enough for us to get to the moon and get ourselves into orbit the way i want so this is the stage right here that's going to the moon minus of course the fairing which we're gonna actually have uh and the staging is gonna be before this okay uh, next, we need to go to our coupling, make sure we're dropping that in there. And then I want to go to my fuel tanks and let's do two of these. Yep. And then we're going to grab the swivel so that I can have more control. We sacrifice a little bit of thrust there, but I think it'll be all right. Uh, let's get a little bit of aerodynamics on the bottom of this thing. We'll go one, two, three, four. I think it's about good. Yep. Just a wee bit amount of uh, stability at the bottom there. I think it'll be fine. Uh, and then I think what I want to do is let's add uh, a couple of boosters on the sides. Just a few, just a couple like, uh, like this. And we don't want to over engineer it. I know it's not costing me any money and we can totally over engineer everything, but I still want to at least practice good habits and not being wasteful in what we need. I know I realize that's not really the Kerbal way kind of speaking blasphemy here by wanting to be efficient here but we can do it I, I believe in ourselves to do this so nose cones on the top of that and this is basically the rocket that's going to go to the moon it's not really all that big of a deal the moon is not hard to achieve here um we're gonna put just because these antennas on the top here inside the fairing are not extended and i don't know whether or not i mean the, the probe itself has an antenna built into it right and that's the whole point and this one can hibernate too to save power this one can't but the transmitter is 200 million meters i don't think i'm gonna need that other that other antenna i think it'll be fine we don't need batteries on the outside we don't need any solar panels on the outside we're solid just like this yeah this is as simple as it gets it gets so this is our rocket that's going to the moon i'm just double checking everything and i'm not missing anything nope i think we're good uh, so Let's make, check our staging really quick. We have the, the boosters. Uh, then we have these. We're going to want the engine to go before that. We're going to use the engine to help to help turn us. So we'll end up staging uh, both of these. Actually, I'll just do it in the same stage. Why not? We'll end up staging both of them together, but we're going to have throttle very low. Uh, and we're just going to use the vectoring on this engine to help turn us in the right direction so that our, our profile is a little bit better rather than having us go straight up because if I don't fire this engine I won't be able to control the rocket and so the solid rocket boosters will just push us straight in the air and uh, we won't be able to like turn over quicker and I want to be able to do that um, so we got this we'll get rid of those and then we've got the um, we're going to be firing this I think probably we're good with the fairing being before this even yeah fairing will go next after that okay this is our rocket for the moon. Let's launch. Okay, so we're on the launch pad. Of course, we have the towers and stuff. We don't have to be sitting on the engines, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, all right, we're going to throttle down to about, let's say, I think like nothing for now. And we'll just let the solid rocket boosters do everything for now. So ready, set, go. Go. So the solids are going to push us straight up for a second here. Just to kind of get us off the ground and then i'm going to start throttling up the other engine just so we can start tipping ourselves a little bit here give ourselves a little bit more control there we go just get ourselves over slightly like that and then we're going to get rid of those and now we really want to nose over here i didn't really get turning as much as i thought i could those thrust those solid rocket boosters are pretty strong but we should be able to pretty easily get the right profile here because we're very we got a lot of control with this vec the vectoring on this engine so and the KSC disappears <laughs> oh yeah welcome to Kerbal Space Program 2 everyone 
All right, we're going to get up to about 80k on the Apoapsis, and I'm going to kill this. So we're going to let ourselves just kind of coast a little bit here. Uh, well, I want to make sure we're still facing the correct direction, though, huh? All right, like, that should be okay. And we'll kill this. All right, so now we're drifting up, and we're going to get to about, I don't know, 50, 55... Thousand. I mean, honestly, we're already pretty much out of the thickest part of the atmosphere anyway, so we can get rid of the fairing now if we want to. Pop. Fairing's gone. We don't need it anymore, and we can also extend our antenna if we want to. So there we go. Get rid of get those out there. Perfect. And uh, now we have good communications regardless uh, because we are well outside of the atmosphere being able to uh, damage our electronics in any way. Okay, so we're going to coast right up here. We are now in space again. And we are getting up there to our apoapsis. It's about 30 seconds away from apoapsis right now. We're going to start just accelerating a little bit more. Just keeping an eye on time to apoapsis, basically, is what I'm concerned with. And I just want to... Basically, I don't, need, I don't need to burn so fast, right? I don't need to burn too fast. I'm still pushing my apoapsis up higher, and I don't really want to do that very much. So we should probably go just a little bit further. Here we go. About about 10 seconds left is fine. All right. Let's push this. Let's take ourselves to the limit here. And what we're going to see is that this stage will get expended. And uh, then it will deorbit and we'll be left with only the final stage here. So bop, bop, and bop. And there we go. And now we are right on the money, right on our apoapsis. It's glorious and circularized. Okay, pretty much. We are now in orbit. Uh, we stopped a little bit late there, so we pushed ourselves up a little bit. We're not totally circularized, but pretty much circularized around uh, Kerbin now. There we go. And we are now equatorial as well, so we are going to be able to get directly to the moon. So where is the moon? Over here. We want to select this as the target. And we can focus on it too, but we don't need that yet. And what we want to do is burn... Pretty much right when we're facing it. We're going to burn at it. And that's going to cause our... And I'm mostly doing this for the newbies. If you're not familiar with like orbital mechanics or you've never seen Kerbal Space Program before, I don't want you to be lost. So we want to push from here. And that is going to... Let's grab this right here. And we're going to see that the orbital trajectory goes out that way. And the reason for that is because this is moving around. And so are we. And we want to make it to where we get out that way at the same time as this does. And so this is kind of the angle that we're going to use to do that. When we get close, we're going to see that this happens. Our interface is going to change. And it's going to start showing us targets. And this is sort of like an indicator of that, hey, we're going to start getting close enough to this that we're going to have, we're going to enter what's called the sphere of influence. In Kerbal Space Program, at least unless you mod it, you are only being affected by the gravity of one orbital body at a time or one, um, one planet, one moon at a time. And so the gravity that Kerbin has, the gravity of the sun, the gravity of other planets, none of that matters as soon as we get into the moon's sphere of influence, which is not how it is in real life. In real life, the gravity of everything is pulling on you all the time. And so calculating orbital mechanics that way is a little more complicated. Um, so we're taking a look really quick and I'm trying to adjust this to where my orbital trajectory is going to go. If I focus this right here, we're going to see that this is where we're going to end up being. It's a little confusing actually, because based on what I'm doing here, it looks like I'm actually going to get, um, I'm going to meet up with the moon twice. <laughs> so I'm going to go out this way. I'll meet up with it as a flyby. I'll get kicked around like this, and then I'll actually end up meeting with it again on the way back, <laughs> which is kind of wild. Yeah, I have two moon periapses right here, completely separate orbits. <laughs> so that's weird. Uh, we're not going to want to do that, of course. We're not going to, we're not playing that game. So let's pull this back and make sure we're only getting one. We don't need any more than that. And right about here should be good. That's getting us really close. To the moon. This is pretty much right where we want to be. It's in range anyway of where we want to be. So this is the maneuver we want to do here. Okay. So we have our heading. We're going to 
orient ourselves towards our maneuver node here. And because we have those built-in reaction wheels, we can throw ourselves around a little bit. Again, it's a little a lot stronger than they would normally be in real life. Reaction wheels do not have that much, that much authority uh, over crafts in real life, but it is what it is now. Uh, okay, so a little test of our communication system is probably in order as well. We're going to go ahead and just do the science really quick there. Return to mission control to submit a mission briefing. Oh, cool. We did, we did some things. Environmental samples and stuff is there. We can transmit everything, but uh, the samples, it says, must be returned to the KSC. So we're not actually going to be able to do this experiment, it doesn't look like. But we can still transmit them all just to make sure that our... See what our speed is, actually. What is our transmission speed? I wish I could see that. Because, I mean, we're using a lot of electric charge, but I don't see the speed of transmission. And I wish I did. All right, anyway. Um, because we transmitted everything, we could just remove everything at this point. And... Uh, I'd like to remove all, but it doesn't look like it's going to let me. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. The samples have to be returned. If we do any samples, they have to be returned to KSC anyway. So this isn't going to be able to be used. But it's nice that we have it on the rocket anyway. Okay. So to do this maneuver, we're going to, again, we're just facing the maneuver node. And we're going to time accelerate to our maneuver. We need to expend 859 meters per second of delta V. So 859 is what we're going to expend. We have over 2,000 banked up here. And there's the moon. And the music changes when you get close to your maneuver and everything. It just, I like how it always does this. Let's listen. We're going to go to the map view for this so I can keep an eye on the current orbit we have. And uh, I'm going to want to start dialing it back when we get close. Uh, cause, because regardless of what this says. Uh, looks like we're going to have to go just a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more right there. I think I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and stop. Stop everything. There we go. And take a look at what we've got. So we are going to get right here. Let's focus on the moon. We're going to get right here, which is pretty dang good. I like it. I, I do wish I know the text on this is ridiculously small. And that's because despite this being practically 2024 and this being the new modern title, they still apparently don't give a shit about making things legible in 4k I, I still apparently don't and it's distressing okay i gotta say it's distressing uh because i don't want to change my entire system resolution for one game just so that the text will turn up better and i like the way this looks in 4k not there it's really blurry because it's at a distance but once we get close oh my god it's like i can drool all right so we are now officially on our way to the moon huh uh, we just want to make sure we have good solar coverage. So I'll just tilt myself this way just a little bit here. Make sure we have good solar coverage. This is this is fine, just the way that is. And uh, we don't have anything to transmit or anything. So we're just going to speed up time really quick. Say bye to Kerbin. Bye-bye, Kerbin. Looks good. Like how the sun... Oh, man. It's a beautiful game, isn't it? Let's get the UI out of the way. Come on. That's beautiful. You have to love it. You have to. And, you know, KSP1 was beautiful, too, especially after mods. You get environmental visual enhancements going. You know, you get some different texture packs. And Astronomer's Visual Pack especially was amazing. There's lots of stuff you can do. Oh, it's very nice. Okay, so we are... See if we can find the moon. There's the moon. Okay, now it says we have lack of s exposure. So we are draining battery right now. So let me just real quick go back here and figure that. Well, it's it's primarily because 
it's of the eclipse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kerbin's blocking the sun. So that's no big deal. I thought maybe we were rotating, but that's that's not the case at all. Yeah, yeah. So when the when the craft goes, uh, you know, blocks the sun like that, we're gonna not have sun exposure, of course. All right, so let's speed up time all again. Again, we're, we're the moon is coming. And, you know, if we run out of electric charge, it'll come back once the sun peaks its head out there again. So we're actually passing the orbital plane of the moon first. And it isn't until we get out here and the gravity of the moon is going to start, is going to yank us and change our trajectory. So right about now, we are now in the sphere of influence. We are now in the sphere of influence of the moon. And that's a whole new biome. So we can go ahead and hit this and we're going to have a whole new set of science that we can transmit now. And we can hit go and transmit it all. It's going to take 60 uh, charge to do that, but that's okay. We're going to try to transmit things uh, fairly quickly. Like as soon as it's available, just in case anything happens. All right. So supposedly we're in range, but there we go. 60 science points. Supposedly we're in range. Yeah, yeah we are. And so now what we want to do is we want to set up another maneuver and we could have done this before, but I'm just waiting till now we set up another maneuver and we're going to tell the game that we would like to burn retrograde at this point, essentially slowing ourselves down is what we're doing. And if we slow ourselves down enough, we'll get completely captured by the moon and we'll be circularized around the moon about like this. And that is going to take us another 234 meters per second of delta V. Which is a very easy thing to do because we have 1,200 available. Yeah, it's very nice. So we're going to rotate ourselves around, get ourselves situated to where we are pointing towards our next maneuver. And find the moon. There it is. There we go. And then we are going to... Uh, I think I'm going to do this. I want to do this manually for a little bit just because I want to see that approach. I like the approach. Oh, it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Of course, we're going to go back behind the dark side of it now, too. So uh, I'm going to have to. I'm just going to do it like this so I don't miss it. And of course, we're going to be in the dark side here when we do the when we do the burn, but that's okay. We have plenty of electric charge. Let's see if the music picks up again. I like how everything changes when you get close to your maneuver. I'm turning it up. We look at the stars. Can you imagine if this game was like No Man's Sky? And you could just, every single one of these is an actual planet you can go to? That'd be crazy. Okay. So that's it. We did that uh, really quickly. I mean, we're in orbit now. I can keep going. And if I keep going, then uh, we bring it down. But we're in orbit now, and that's all we needed to do. So right about like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn to where we go even lower. Even lower. I want to get right near the surface on the on the light side. There. Like it. I like it. All right. Let's get closer to the moon than Kerbal Kind has ever been before. We're going to zoom ourselves ahead here so we can start seeing what we're doing. And we're actually going to get so close to the moon that it will limit how fast we're allowed to time accelerate. Because we're going to get close enough to where for safety will be pulled in or oh, uh, maybe it won't oh well, maybe it will let us do it I mean we're still yeah we're 10 10k, 10K up so I guess maybe it won't do that wow maybe we should burn again I think we should bring our orbit really low that sounds like a good idea doesn't it 70 more science there I like it we're still in sunlight go ahead and transmit we should see that happening right there. Yep. And then now that we're 
we're almost at periaps and uh, then we'll start slowing down we don't have enough to land at least I don't believe we do I'm just gonna get really low here 30 seconds okay so right about there and then we're going to burn retrograde lower our apoapsis down to like you know 10,000 meters Ooh, we're going down as low as six. That's pretty wild. Let's 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 do it. Let's let's go down as low as six. I'm waiting for the textures to pop in because you're supposed to have really sharp textures, but you have to get close enough for those to exist. I think. There we go. They're starting to pop in. It takes a little bit for them to load, but once they do, the moon looks pretty good. I'm digging the I'm digging the music though. The moon's got a cool soundtrack to it, I think. There's a crater right there. Man, it looks like we could even go lower. Huh? I feel like we could even go lower. Well we will. In the next in the next mission we will do, we will go lower probably because we're gonna land. It's sort of like a big dark plane. If if the moon had planes, that's what this would be. Approaching moon, lowering time warp for safety. Okay, so the, apparently the safety zone on that is like 6,600 here. So we can go lower than I thought we could on the moon. That's interesting. All right, I'm going to, I guess, go this. This is as fast as we can go with this. It looks, it looks pretty good. I do have to slow down so they can load the textures in properly. But other than that, it looks pretty good. All right, so uh, have we got enough of the moon yet? Or do we want to keep going? I guess you can't really tell me, can you? I'm going to say we've had enough of the moon for now. I do see my periapsis climbing. That's a little weird. Just saying. The fact that my periapsis is climbing. But I do want my I, I do want my orbit to be, you know, 20, 30,000. I don't really want it to be this low. If we're going to set up some kind of commsat network and I want this to be part of it, then I would want to be up higher anyway. The thing is, this has so much delta V that I can easily do that later. So as long as this doesn't crash, we're good. And I'm seeing my orbits change here, which is very bizarre. My periaps is going up. My apoaps is going down. And I'm doing nothing to the craft. And all the while, I'm actually lower. <laughs> oh, that's ground altitude. This is the sea level altitude. Uh, but yeah, you can see like I'm, I'm, you know, only 5,300 meters up above the current level of the ground. That's crazy. All right. I do want to get up a little higher here, so I'm going to let it run until I get to the periaps. And then, uh, I think I'll boost my apple apps up a little bit and then I'll go ahead and get my periaps up a little bit after that. All right. So we're back up high above the moon again. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and raise my periapsis up to where it's circularized pretty much with where I am now. So this gives me a relatively circularized orbit of about 100 kilometers above the surface of the moon. And I don't think I could actually make a satellite network with this type of thing, but it's right here. And I have 763 remaining, so I can pretty much manipulate this craft in any way I want around the moon. Uh, save for perhaps going polar at this point. I think I probably don't have enough to do that, but... Uh, maybe, I don't know. I definitely have enough to come back to Kerbin. I just don't have enough to land because uh, I don't have any parachutes. And propulsively landing on Kerbin with this much is, mm, I want to say not possible. At least safely. So uh, this is going to stay right where it is. Yeah, this is where it's going to stay. So we're going to go like, uh, well, we're going to go like this. Let's go to the research area. Make sure that we've transmitted everything. And if there's anything we haven't transmitted yet, we need to do that. Now, the environmental samples, of course, all that stuff needs to be returned in order to um, to take advantage of it. So these high above uh, high orbit moon samples that we got and the environmental samples from low orbit moon, all of these types of things, it's 120 science that we won't get because we can't get this craft. However, probably if we go to mission control, probably, oh, they're going to give us this too. Cool. Uh, we'll just go ahead and grab that. 
uh, yeah we, we did the science junior so that makes sense uh so we'll go ahead and do this and then um what i'm thinking will probably happen is it's going to tell us to land on the moon now so submit gotcha 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 it's fine over and out goodbye and now it says one small step yep that makes sense so lands on the surface of the moon for 300 and it's also giving us first dibs plant a flag within any mare on the moon so apparently they're not calling them bion they're calling them mare would you land on a mare one of the moon's smooth dark lowlands ah okay that's what they're calling so we need to dark smooth dark lowlands is what that's called and then the perfect circle circle establish an orbit around Kerbin with an ap and pe each between 99 and 101. so i think we can do all of these in one single mission i think that's pretty easy to do so because space walking is totally possible to do as well so we're going to build a manned spacecraft now that's going to go and land on the surface of the moon we'll eva while we're in Kerbin orbit probably circularized around 100 kilometers and then when we land on the moon we'll also make sure that we plant the flag so we're going to land on one of the mares so all that stuff is the mission that we're going to we're going to tackle okay that's the, that's the steps let's go to research and development really quick we're going to need moon landing because we need the landing legs and everything so we'll go ahead and grab that uh we probably should deal with power launchers here too getting the skipper engine i think would be pretty pretty helpful so i think we'll go ahead and grab that too and that is going to unlock tier two so we can now do medium orbital rocketry if we'd like to it's also going to give us the cupola module this is an observation module and uh we can get a three seat command pod Ooh. Or a two-seat one. Ooh. We, bought, we want to do that, right? I feel like we want to do that. For our moon mission, I feel like we want to have more than one Kerbal going on it, but... I don't know, maybe not. Uh, let's see. Basic docking is probably not necessary. Trusses and stuff, probably not. Micro-construction, probably not. Struts are okay. Yeah, we could probably either... Yeah, I think struts. We'll get struts. Space tape. We'll do, go ahead and do that. Uh, and then that's it. So for the vehicle assembly building, we're only going to be able to send one Kerbal to the moon. And up until this point, because this is a single seat lander can, I don't think we're going to end up doing the lander can. Although the lander can is lighter. The lander can is lighter than the command pod. Interesting. What's going on with that? This is lighter than this. Hmm, interesting. Okay. I'm not sure how to design. I haven't had a lot of thought in designing this. You know, what? let me get let me take some thought into this. Um, if I was gonna do a lander can like this, it would have the heat shield. Uh I would have a parachute, of course, on the top. And we'd probably put two drogue chutes on the sides. So we'd do something like this. That's pretty fair. That's how I did it last time, it worked out pretty well. Um, I don't need the reaction wheel stabilizer. I would need to have, let's do one of the science juniors underneath like this, because we'd want to have that. We don't need the small one anymore. Uh, and then for this, we definitely want the heat shield in the bottom. And that would be how we sort of set up our landing back on Kerbin when we're going there. Uh, so from there, we would want to take our, our decoupler here put this up a little bit okay um and then from there what's the stage that's going to actually land on the moon i'm pretty sure we can jump and use our jetpack and get high and high enough to be able to interact with this but just in case maybe we will add a little ladder this is the it says this is the front of it but i feel like that's the door we're going to be exiting out of right it's right there so we want the ladder to be kind of there I guess yeah so we can grab it um maybe some spotlights maybe some small some small dome lights maybe even would be a good idea maybe above it you could put one like right here just one they don't really have a whole lot of mass so it's not a huge deal if they're not symmetrical or anything uh this is gonna be uh Armstrong one. <laughs> I don't know. There we go. Armstrong one is what you'll, we'll, we'll name you. Uh, and then with the, uh, with this module here, we need to have enough fuel 
for us to land and that's the big ticket here is how much fuel are we gonna have here the skipper is a really big engine we're gonna use that in a second but i think probably we want the swivel mm, no nah, the terrier right it, as long as it has a good thrust to weight ratio here i think that would be all right um if we plan the trip to moon we don't have a whole lot of delta v with this actually need to extend this ladder down a little bit too don't i so we're gonna bring this ladder down to be let's say about like this and then we'll do one more about there and then one more about here so that'll really just let us get on the ladder and climb up a bit uh to get to the door once we land uh speaking of landing let's get the landing legs on we're gonna want four and a lot of people want to do three but uh trust me man the stability of four is way better than three so we're gonna go about like i think about like this as low as we can go here i think uh, let's extend the legs okay so we, we can come down we can come up a little bit more we want to keep our center of mass low here so i think right here is probably good we don't want the engine necessarily because these are going to give a little bit unless they can be adjusted uh, auto suspension yeah they, they, they can i think it'll be fine but let's let's bring it down just a little bit more all right so this is the lander as we know uh as we know it it's going to be down here this is going to give us 840 meters per second and that's not a lot of fuel that's not that's not great actually I, I think I would love to have even more than this um and I think uh to get even more than this we should consider getting a little bigger fuel tank in here this is around this is going to give us 1500 I think that's a little bit better I think that's going to be a lot better for us um so we'll go up about like that with the landing legs and then we just want to copy the u down uh we don't need this many though let's just one is fine there 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 we don't have one of those retractable ladders yet there so we can get right down there and climb up to the top and we're gonna land on something flat so that should help us too all right let's assume that we're done right here and this is all set now we need to get this to the surface and this is what's gonna land so we're gonna eat into this a little bit when we're trying to land we need to be able to have enough fuel to lift off the moon get to orbit and get back to Kerbin as well all of that still has to happen we have to get back to Kerbin as well um so part of me actually wants to put a little engine stage in here uh part of me does let me see the engineer's report really quick so we have 0.5 uh this is thrust to weight in Kerbin. it's not to the moon and i don't think there's a way for me to know exactly what my thrust to weight ratio will be on the moon now if we want to do a round trip uh to the surface it says that the vessel the vehicle has to have a total of 1462 uh sorry 1020 uh it has to have a total of 10,240 and all I'm curious about right now though is is the part that's right here so moon surface 580 moon surface 580 low orbit so this stage right here we need about 1400 and that's what we have but then I also need the moon intercept here and then the low Kerbin orbit here I don't need this part we're gonna use arrow braking so we don't need to use propulsive uh you don't use, use we're not going to use propulsion to slow ourselves down we're going to use Kerbin's atmosphere so this is greatly reduced at that point so if we can build something that has like about seven or eight k i think we'll be solid at this point so let me go ahead and just uh bring these legs back in and uh we're gonna be able to see what's next here so what's next is coupling we're gonna grab this coupler here and then we're gonna want to get I want bigger engines so I want to be able to use these bigger tanks but I don't I don't think we can let's see what happens if we just use this one here and then I want to get it's the limitation in parts like I don't want it to have to 
Hmm. There's no there's no tank that also serves as an adapter, and there's no adapter. We don't have that right now. Uh, well, we do have an adapter right there. We do have an adapter. Okay, so since we have an adapter, we go like this. And I think right about here is a good place to put some more control authority here. So we're going to want to do... Oh, where is it? Utility? Stabilizer? Let's pop a stabilizer right here. And that's purely to give us more control authority so we can manage this thing and, and rotate it and stuff in space. Um, this big part here we're building now is going to end up getting deorbited uh, at the moon. It's going to crash into the moon, basically. So I'm thinking we're going to go probably this big. This is pretty big. <laughs> uh, what does that give us? So that gets us to orbit right here. We get to orbit and curbing with this. It doesn't get us to the moon. So to get to the moon here, we need a lot more. And uh, checking my thrust to weights 1.9. So we definitely have the ability to add more. I'm going to add two more of these and see what that gets me. 1.18. So that's no good. We, Well, it's okay, actually, because we're going to use boosters, too. So this gives me 5,300. And then if we take the boosters into account here as well... I think that'll push us over the top. So coupling, we want the big boosters here. We're going to go one, two, three, four. Probably put them up about like this. This seems fine. Yeah. And then uh, we'll go in and take our... Mm, this is 670. Yeah. I'm looking at the uh, max thrust in atmosphere. These ones are really really big <laughs> uh probably way overkill big probably only need two of these big is probably what i'm thinking so maybe we shorten this down and bring it to just two of them instead uh like that's that's kind of crazy right <laughs> it gets us to 6500 and then uh we're gonna fire this after these but we're gonna be, we're gonna want to be able to steer it so same thing we did bef before, maybe even doing three of these boosters would be all right. Yeah, maybe it depends on how my, my launch profile is. If I'm good with how I'm moving it, I kind of don't like how wide they're sticking out. I kind of want them to be closer to the body, which I know is a bad thing. Now you got to have them, you got to have them separated. Yeah. You got to keep them separated. So. Do it like this instead. We'll put three of them on there. More boosters is the Kerbal way, isn't it? So. Yeah. It didn't really change my... Oh, I don't want this to be in the same stage. Yeah, you go here. And then you go here. Yeah, now what's my delta V? Can you calculate that again? Calculate it for me. Still 5,400. It didn't change anything? Wow. Wow. That is kind of interesting. All right, so I was trying to figure out why I didn't have enough uh, Delta V over here and everything. And it's all about the staging and stuff. So I've uh, messed with the staging, got everything to be correct as I know, as I want it to be. And it says I have just under 6,200 meters per second. I'm not entirely sure that's enough to get where we want to be with this. Like, I, I feel like that's enough to land, do the thing, and take off, but... I'm not, I'm not super confident. I know that the game tells you you need 10,000, but again, we don't need 10,000. We can get rid of almost all of that low curb and orbit metric that's, uh, that it's looking at here. So if I go back to the moon here real quick, uh, round trip from the moon, we can pretty much ignore this entire thing. And, uh, because of that, I'm feeling like, you know, maybe somewhere in the seven K range would be a good thing, but we might also be able to cheap out on some of these things here too. Like low curb and orbit going 3,400 seems actually a little low. I normally, at least in Kerbal Space Program 1, you need about 4K, 3,800. But uh, yeah, so I think that the moon intercept, for example, and getting in the low or low moon orbit, like all these types of things here, we may be able to you know, go a little under here. But I think it's for insurance purposes, we probably should have more than this. I'm thinking... 
around 7,000 if we can. So uh, let's see where we could potentially add more. Uh, I'm going to go like this. There's a, an extra stage right here. And I think with this craft, the engineering report, I, I do wish it would show me what the thrust to weight ratio is in a vacuum instead of being on uh, just like it doesn't it doesn't show that. It's not going to give me that information. Uh, Kerbal manager as well. We're going to send uh, Bob. Is Bob here? We're going to send Bob to the moon instead of Val. But I, I don't, I don't see any metrics on that. So it, it looks like it just doesn't tell you. So got a couple of choices to make here, I guess. Right? We have the obviously the landing stage is there, and this is the probably the least flexible part of our entire thing. So I'm also, again, still considering putting like little, you know, little solid rocket boosters on, uh, on this part here, just so we get that little extra bit, you know, something like this, just giving us a little extra for the landing. I'm going to give that a shot. I don't know if that's even worth it, but we're going to give that a shot. And then all of these go on the same engine as this one. So when we fire this engine, it'll fire these. I'd rather it be separate. Let's, uh, let's put this here. Yeah. So if we need them, we'll fire them. If we don't, we can use them on liftoff to give us just that little extra bit of push. Cause this, the Terrier engines really don't have a whole lot of thrust here. We're talking, uh, 60 kilonewtons of thrust in a vacuum. It's really light. 60 kilonewtons. And then each one of these little guys here give us 18. So just for a brief moment, we have double. And uh, I think that's maybe the difference there. But it's, I still don't think it's enough. We, we need something else. Something of more substance here. And I'm, I'm wondering if replacing this engine with something else is a better call. I'm wondering if replacing this with like maybe the Reliant. And then putting another tank in here like a smaller adding like a smaller tank right here um well at this stage here we don't we don't need a lot of thrust we just need a lot of delta v i think this one maybe is okay let's let's try that what does it give us now see again the staging is off so it's going to show me bad numbers but i need to get the staging correct so uh, assuming we get the staging correct yeah these this thing is way out of order so this needs to go Wow, how did you screw that up, game? I don't know how you put these two together. That's silly. Oh, yeah, they, they just screwed the entire thing up. So I'm going to have to redo this. Give me a second. All right, that was some really screwed up staging. But it's all fixed now. Everything's going to fire in the order that it's supposed to. Uh, the next thing we need then is... I mean, we're only getting 6,200 from this. So it still didn't really give us much more. Uh, the only way I could possibly change that is to add more boosters here. Uh, which is uh, a doable thing. It's going to mess up my staging again, probably, but we'll see. Let's add... Uh, if I if I go for four boosters instead of two, what does that do for my Delta V numbers here? If I go for, like, say, this many boosters, what does that do for me? Well, let's take a look here. Uh, it doesn't change much. In fact, it may have made it worse somehow. It seems to have somehow made it worse, and I don't know how that's possible uh yeah you then you then you get rid of them then you then there there so the staging is still correct yep staging is still correct somehow that made it worse it's kind of weird adding more boosters made it worse that's what it says if i go back to two if I go back to two here, yeah, it's, it's not reading correctly here. I don't really know how much we have, but I'm pretty sure that's not correct. So I'm going to go with four, even though the stats just keep getting worse. We're going to go with four here. And that's just going to be how we lift off. It says 5,000, but I just, I just don't believe it. I just don't trust that at all. So we're going to say that this has enough. <laughs> <laughs> and if it doesn't, then we'll have to rescue whoever the poor Kerbal is, Bill. Bob. We're going to rescue Bob. If something goes wrong, we'll go rescue you, dude. Uh, all right. So we're going to say 
that that's good the last thing we need then for this is we're gonna need like solar we're gonna need batteries you know you need all those things so uh let's go up and look at what we've got here for the body of this craft and i'm thinking probably all on the edges here I mean, once we're entering the atmosphere we're not going to need any more we can just be on internal power at that point we're not going to need uh, anything different here i think i'm going to add a couple of antenna on the tank yeah we don't have to worry about costs and stuff because there's no money in this game so uh, i suppose we could just uh, put a couple here up by, uh, I don't want to block the door. Put a couple like right here. That's fine. And then we'll go ahead and go for rotation here. And we'll just rotate this part. Kind of up like that. That's fine. It doesn't really look great, but it's fine. And then maybe we could even uh, slide it into position here. No, it didn't. Uh, I hit the wrong tool. I have to get used to these tools again. So you, it's it's rotation and translation. So rotation like that, and then translation is right there. And then we can go in like that. And I'm sure the hotkeys are the exact same as what they were in Kerbal Space Program Two or Kerbal Space Program One. I'm sure they're exactly the same uh, as one, two, and three and all that. Uh, I just uh, don't remember things like that. Okay, so those are done. Now we need the solar panels. We'll take a couple of really big arrays on the tank here, I think. It's probably the best way to go here. So we'll go ahead and get the snapping turned back on. And we're going to go right about here, here with it. Oh, I want two. There we go. So on the sides here, right next to the ladder, maybe just after the ladder, maybe it was a little bit over from the ladder. We'll go about here with it. Solar panels. Okay. I know, very aerodynamic. Definitely. Definitely a good decision there. And then we bought a bunch of rechargeable batteries and stuff too. So we'll add like a few down on this side. Maybe we'll do something like this. It's just eating into my my delta v there but eating into my capabilities so lots of power lots of power generation good data transmission we have uh pretty much everything gets burnt up or wasted at some point here so it should be ready to rock i, I think this will work i know it says five thousand. i just don't believe it i just uh i don't i don't i don't trust that I'm pretty sure we have more than that. If we don't have more than this, then when we get to orbit, it should show me that we only have like a thousand left. And then it should basically tell me at that point that we can only reach the moon. We have like a floor of flyby. We won't even be able to get orbit. Like you can't even get orbit with this. So if we can get to the, the moon and get orbit, then this is definitely wrong. Uh, we'll save this as Armstrong one. We'll just go ahead and save it. Uh, and then uh, I want to say we launch it. Hmm? Are we ready to go to the moon? I think we go ahead and launch it from here. Just checking the staging again. These two are going to happen. Then this goes. And at that point, we're we're solid at that point. So.